Hello, I'm Michael Good, CEO of University of Utah Health, presenting the COVID-19 update for January 26, 2021. And uh, one of our more uh, optimistic uh, reports uh, in recent uh, months uh, with many downward tails on the data and the charts and the trends we followed. follow. We start here with the United States. Uh, and as you've probably been seeing in the news, the number of new daily cases of coronavirus infections uh, diagnosed each year in our country, each day in our country, uh, is finally declining. The blue line showing the seven day average and it's now down uh, under uh, 200,000 uh, new diagnoses a day after being up uh, high at, at quite high levels uh, for quite a while. Recall that uh, we have changes in new cases and then a few weeks later, we see changes in hospitalization. And then a few weeks after that, we see changes uh, in the mortality uh, from coronavirus or COVID-19. So we haven't quite seen that change uh, yet in the number of new deaths each day in our country, still unfortunately having uh, several days in the recent week with over 4,000 deaths, but also a few recent days here uh, with lower numbers uh, as well. So we'll hope that the uh, number of deaths from COVID-19 follows the changing pattern that we're seeing in the number of new cases. Uh, even more pronounced is that downward trend here in the state of Utah. With uh, We've talked in the last few uh, uh, updates about the effects of the holidays where we first see a decline and then a rebound we see a decline and after the Christmas holiday, a pretty strong rebound, uh, but now even that's coming down. And if you kind of uh, look through the midpoint of that up and down variation, you do see a, a decreasing trend in the number of new cases of coronavirus in the state of Utah. Similarly, uh, a, a level or flat uh, in the number of new deaths, fair amount of day-to-day -day variation uh, with uh, some days here as many as 20 or 30 deaths, uh, other days uh, with just, uh, uh, just a, a two, three, four, many days with 10. So a lot of day-to-day -day variation in the seven-day uh, rolling average, uh, kind of hovering in the 12, 13 range now. And again, as the number of new cases decline, uh, we'll hope to see the number of deaths decline as well. We'd show both uh, the national a chart and also the chart here uh, maintained by the Utah uh, Department of Health, both of them flattening out and hopefully soon to decline. Uh, continued decline in the number of active infections in our state, uh, dropping below 50,000 uh, for the first time in a while. Uh, that translates to about 1.5% of the population of Utah having an active coronavirus infection or said another way, about one out of every 65 individuals. That has come down. Remember, the bigger this number, that means the fewer infections that we have. Uh, that's come down from one out of uh, 56 individuals uh, just a week ago. The United States, uh, which I commented last week, had seen this continued rise in active uh, infections. Maybe a, a suggestion of a, uh, at least a slowing down uh, and hopefully soon a leveling off uh, in the number of new active infections. But a really good trend uh, here in the state of Utah and one we hope will sustain and continue uh, further declines. Uh, again, the reproductive number is the number of individuals, each person who has a coronavirus infection uh, shares that or infects others with. When that's below one, uh, that means we're seeing a slowdown in the spread of the uh, back of the virus in our community. And here, I'll, let me use the inset. One means uh, if we're below one, we're seeing the transmission slow. And we've seen a really good period here now. Oh, from around uh, the 8th or 9th of January, where we dropped down below one and we've sustained uh, below one now uh, for that time. A little bit of up and down variation here, but still well below one. And that's what we need, uh, as explained to me by uh, Drs. Zhang and Seymour, uh, from an epidemiologic and biostatistics standpoint, we need that reproductive number 
to stay below one. How do we get that? All of the things we're doing, and we'll say again at the end of this uh, update, uh, staying physically distant, washing hands, wearing masks, staying away from others when we're sick, and uh, also then the increasing rollout uh, of the vaccine, hopefully playing uh, a role as well. Uh, positivity rate, uh, which uh, over several months uh, had really moved in an in a unfavorable direction, uh, peaking up here uh, 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 in the 33 range, uh, also a severally, several weeks now of a nice decline, uh, hovering around uh, 20%. So one in five, we've moved from one in three coronavirus tests being positive uh, to one in five. Again, just another sign that the spread of the virus is slowing down in our community, uh, probably related to many uh, different reasons. A lot of information on this chart, but the previous chart shows the percentage of tests that are positive. Uh, the bars here, the gray bars show the number of new coronavirus infections diagnosed by uh, molecular or PCR tests and the uh, yellow bars, yellow orange bars, show the number of individuals diagnosed by uh, antigen tests. And you can see we have increasing use of antigen tests in our state, uh, but you can see, again, we mentioned it before, declining numbers of new coronavirus cases each day. And we're very pleased to see this now translating into decreased Utahns in hospitals with coronavirus. So the blue line down at the bottom are the number of new admissions to a Utah hospital for COVID-19. And you can see uh, that we're down, uh, we had approached almost 100 a day and we're down in the 60 to 70 uh, range, 60 to 70 Utahns being hospitalized each day from coronavirus down from nearly 100 here uh, a couple months ago. But here, most impressively, uh, moving from where we were uh, approaching uh, 600 Utahns in a hospital with COVID, now uh, down under 500. So we're very pleased to see the declining hospitalizations. The red line is the ICUs, also with a nice declining tail on it, meaning fewer uh, people, fewer Utahns are in our hospitals uh, with COVID-19. Same thing is happening here at University of Utah Hospital. The left chart, you can see there was a period where uh, we were having uh, you know, well over 10 to 15 admissions uh, each day. Uh, in recent days, that's been coming down uh, to where we've been only having around four, five, six, seven admissions uh, each day. The blue line is the 14-day running sum of uh, admissions. And you can see, although those holiday up and down and rebound that we talked about before, uh, the overall trend is clearly down. On the right, we see our hospital census uh, with active coronavirus cases, both the total hospital, uh, the medical ward, and the ICU census, all with nice declines uh, over the last week. And this is giving our staff uh, a much needed break, many staff having worked mandatory overtime and mandatory extra shifts, uh, now getting back to a, a somewhat more normal census in some of our units and uh, being able to work a, a more normal uh, shift rather than the, the mandatory uh, overtime. So again, nice trends with fewer people needing care inside the University of Utah Hospital for corona, uh, corona, uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus infections. Classes have resumed uh, the spring semester here at the University of Utah. So we, uh, again, continuing our tracking. We're through a variety of sources. Uh, on the 25th, the day of this report, we track new COVID-19 cases every day at the university. Uh, we had seven on the 25th. Uh, you can see we've been averaging about uh, 18 and that's held pretty steady uh, uh, as classes have started. Uh, the, the statistics also show the total number of infections that we knew about during the fall semester and how many we've had so far in the spring semester. Remember, 
there's 62,000 students, faculty, and staff uh, that work uh, or learn uh, at the University of Utah. And so we're very pleased uh, that these, uh, these rates uh, have remained low, not only in the, the last fall semester, but uh, early on into uh, the new spring semester. So we'll continue to attract that. We, are, we do have a much more uh, expansive testing program uh, now active uh, in the spring semester. As before, we continue to uh, rapidly test any member of that, that 62,000 campus community who either is symptomatic uh, with COVID-19 symptoms or who is identified through contact tracing that they were around someone who was infectious. But now we extend our housing, our testing of students, HRE, our students who live in our dormitories. We are now testing all students who live in the dormitories weekly. Uh, we offer a weekly test. We would really like all of our uh, students on campus who have any learning on campus to get tested weekly. And we now have that capability. And in fact, uh, we can test any student, faculty, or staff uh, uh, those without symptoms, without contact with someone known to have um, coronavirus or a, a COVID-19, uh, but these individuals still desiring uh, testing. Uh, and so that program uh, for all students on campus and anyone in our campus community that's concerned. In the first week uh, here in the spring semester, we, had, we tested 2,000 students who live in the dorms. We tested over 1,000 students who do not live in the dorms, but have classes on campus. Uh, and we tested several hundred uh, uh, faculty and staff uh, who wanted to, or were concerned and wanted to, to be able to get a test. Uh, we're getting good rapid uh, turnover. And uh, so we're very pleased and we're hopeful that this expanded uh, testing program will allow us to more quickly uh, isolate uh, those identified particularly with asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic uh, infections with coronavirus, uh, we've shown, we're showing right about 1%, just a little bit of under 1% of asymptomatic uh, individuals uh, tested in these uh, testing programs for asymptomatic individuals. Right now we're running about a 1% positivity rate. So again, it just shows you that uh, asymptomatic individuals by and large uh, do not have the coronavirus infection, but one out of 100 do. And it's really important that we identify that one out of 100 and get them into a isolated living situation as quickly as possible. So they do not infect others. And that's how we keep that reproductive number uh, below one, as I showed in a previous chart. With all this expanded testing, we're also then able to monitor broader areas of the campus and with the capability then to go in and do enhanced testing in any area that shows up uh, with increased numbers of coronavirus cases. So uh, really pleased a whole team of individuals uh, coming together to uh, have expanded testing capabilities for our campus community. Uh, we also now uh, share the uh, vaccine uh, update uh, from the Department of Health, the Utah Department of Health website. We continue to see uh, increases in the number of individuals vaccinated, now up over uh, 200,000. We've completed over 14,000 vaccinations of healthcare personnel with their first dose, and uh, over 8,000 of our healthcare personnel have received their second dose. Uh, the state is now uh, directing the vast majority of the vaccine supply to the county health departments. And so uh, we encourage everyone the, in the 1B category, our essential workers and those over the age of 70, uh, please refer to the state's websites and the procedures for how to get scheduled. If you are in the group of 1B, uh, which is uh, much more details on the Department of Health website, uh, please get scheduled for your vaccine. Uh, these declining numbers, as I mentioned, are probably related to many different factors, uh, but one of them probably is the increasing uh, numbers of Utahns uh, that, are, that are being uh, immunized uh, with the vaccine. 
I just want to uh, reemphasize probably the greatest impact uh, on these declining numbers, certainly a key impact, are these same principles that we've been uh, reciting since the very near the beginning of the pandemic, uh, mask wearing, hand washing, physical distancing, and isolation when sick or when uh, shown to have a positive uh, coronavirus test, uh, even if we're not sick. Very important to is isolate. But hopefully also the uh, growing number of vaccinated individuals. Remember when you have a vaccine, the vaccine prevents you from getting a severe illness should you encounter the coronavirus, uh, by, uh, should you en encounter coronavirus. But what it does not prevent is you still could perhaps harbor the virus and potentially share it with others, even though you yourself um, do not get sick because you've had the vaccine and you are immunized. So even in vaccinated individuals, it's really important uh, that we include uh, the, these public health uh, uh, measures. As an aside, I will point out that uh, in our health system and in others, we're seeing very, very little influenza this year, substantially reduced numbers of individuals suffering for what we often refer to as seasonal flu. And while we're implementing these measures principally for the coronavirus, uh, these same measures we believe are having a, a huge impact on the number of individuals that we're not having to treat with severe forms of influenza and other uh, viral illnesses and particularly pneumonias that we typically see this time of year. So I know we've been at this a long time. I know um, it, gets, it gets tiring to, I occasionally walk out of the house myself and have to walk back in and grab a mask. Uh, it's easy to forget, but these public health measures are making a difference and please uh, continue to do them. As we see uh, a number of indications now that uh, virus spread is slowing in our community. We're gonna certainly keep doing all the things we can do in the health system at the un and the university uh, to do our part. Please, I ask you to continue to do yours. It is together that we will beat coronavirus. We'll be back next week with our next update. Have a great week.